Well, firstly, none of us want to see uh, children in camps and children destitute on the streets. And, of course, we should be doing our bit. Where The problem I have with this is I think we're doing a grand job out in uh, Jordan and Lebanon. And, you know, aid charities are telling us for every one person that we bring here to Britain, we can aid 20 to 30 people out in the camps already. And the other issue that we have is there are 40,000 children in this country now awaiting foster homes. Will they be shunted to the back of the queue? I hope not. Uh, and we don't know the numbers which are going to come. But at the same time, Andrew, I will say this. Now, I do think Cameron is generally got getting this right in the sense that he's asking local councils first to see what they can cope mm. with in terms of school places, in, you know, in, in terms of foster homes. So he's getting it right on this point, but equally I would like to see the money spent in the camps which right. exist already. Right. But we are Jordan already Lebanon. spending money on the camps. Indeed, the government tells us endlessly that we are spending more than any other country by the United States, which means per capita we're spending a lot more than any other country. I'm still unclear yes. if you think we should make any contribution to the plight of the unaccompanied children already in the European Union that some of them mm -hmm. should come be taken in by this country or not. Well, my fear is, is that we will be encouraging even more trafficking. It, it could be a pull factor, and I think the Prime Minister was probably right uh, on his point before this decision was taken. What we don't want to see is more children being brought uh, through Turkey and in the Aegean Sea and forced across Europe simply because it puts money in traffickers' so, pockets. So, therefore, I would, rather take, I would rather take children directly from the camps, which already exist in Jordan and Lebanon, where right. we're doing some sterling work. So that's a no. Uh, well, it's, it's a caveat, really. I want to see how many are going to come. And as I say, well, I don't want to see British children who are already waiting for foster homes okay. shunted to the back of the queue. Moreover, moreover, Andrew, you know, a figure, la a figure last night, there were 100,000 children in Britain last night who either slept homeless or were in homeless accommodation. I don't think it's wrong to say I want to see British children put to the front of the queue. Paul Nuttall, what's your view about Turkish people <laughs> having visa-free travel inside Europe's Schengen area? Uh, well, I think we're rewarding Turkey for bad behaviour in the past. Uh, they, they've done pretty much nothing about people traffickers. And, uh, uh, and now, if you look at the things which uh, President Erdogan has been doing over recent years in terms of shutting down free speech, shutting down newspapers, shutting down opposition TV channels, locking up journalists, these are the people who we're cracking this deal with. And look, if we allow visa-free access oh. uh, to Turkey across the Schengen area, then in effect, Turkey already has one foot within the European Union and the EU border then goes all the way to the Levant, uh, to Syria, to Iraq, to Iran. And when we're being told by the head of Europol that there are already 5,000 jihadis in Europe that want to do us harm, I think giving visa-free visa access to Turkish people uh, will simply make Europe a less secure place. Right. I mean, you say we're rewarding Turkey, but Turkey, the European Commission feels, is needed in order to try and stem the flow of migrants from Syria and other places. Are you expecting Turkey to actually do something for nothing here? Well, uh, the fact that we're going to be giving Turkey over £6 billion over the next uh, decade as a result of this deal, I think, is pretty good for Turkey. But equally, is it pretty I good for us too, though? Open, open, oh, hang on, hang, hang on. <laughs> They're opening the next chapter towards Turkish accession into the European Union. And Turkey has no place within the EU. Now, even if Turkey doesn't join for the next five years, for the next ten years, if we vote to stay on June the 23rd, it shows you the direction in which the EU is travelling. And that is towards Turkish accession. Now, let's look at Turkey. Only 3% of Turkey is actually in Europe. It will be the poorest country in Europe. And when it joins, it's estimated within the first decade, 15 million Turks will drift west onto the European All right. continent. All right. Therefore, I think that is a quite dangerous prospect Although, indeed. of course, the price...